Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me here today. I'm with Christopher Root, the CEO of Delta Hawk, and Kyle Foso, the president of Bushliner, who's going to manufacture the 1850. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I had the pleasure of going to the Delta Hawk uh, presser this week down at the uh, headquarters uh, for all, all things EAA when they, when they give out the, uh, the pressers. And uh, I was amazed at what's occurred this year for Delta Hawk, both on the SDC side and Kyle's project. And it's almost overload. And also um, the RV-14. And that's, you know, on the SDC side, you've got Cirrus, the 172, the 182, and now the Somali. Uh, it's been a bang up year for you guys. Well, it has, and and uh, you know, I guess in talking about all things that uh, the the RV14 to start there since we're at EAA, the experimental side uh, has been a, has been a big hit for the show. Um, there's a constant need for the everybody to switch away from Avgas to a heavy fuels solution. Obviously, with the Delta engine being a Jet A one certified engine, almost no one has been able to certify a heavy fuels engine. Um, and Delta Hawk has a very compelling story for a lot of different uh, airframes, including Kyle's uh, Bushliner plane that uh, that we announced yesterday as well. Kyle, your airplane's very unique. It's in what they would call the Bush segment, which is really popular these days. For folks that have not heard of it or seen it for our audience, could you give us a brief synopsis of the project and the integration of the V6 uh, Delta Hawk? Uh, yeah, so my uh, background, my team's background is uh, legacy aircraft restoration. And so we originally set out to restore 185s. And during that process, we uh, acquired the Cyclone kit, which is an EAB uh, kit aircraft. Um, the issue we had uh, with the Cyclone uh, is we had to make new tooling for uh, the Cyclone. Uh, and to do that, we had to complete the uh, digital model that they had um, uh, provided. Um, then we had feedback from the community said we, you know, we want to buy this airplane. If we're going to pay this much money for it, we need to have some shoulder room in it. So we want it to be wider. Um, and then we want a larger cargo door. And so we really took the 185 community input and um, rolled that into the foundational Cyclone uh, platform. Um, and then we, um, we weren't allowed to call it the C-180. Uh, once we imported the kit from Canada here, so we called it the 1850 to say it's 10 times better now. Um, and then our team's been through it and had to structurally adjust a lot of uh, load paths that aren't, don't match modern day uh, standards for construction or safety. Um, and the demand got so big uh, underneath us as we were doing this um, that we couldn't even anticipate serving that demand without a, um, an engine that would burn uh, Jet A or another type of kerosene, um, as well as an engine that we could call on and have delivered in um, you know, a few months instead of uh, 18 or, or 36 uh, months. And so while I um, you know, started with pistons and have um, you know, all, the, all the best impressions of uh, the engines that I've flown behind, I'm pretty excited to uh, bolt these new six cylinders on the, on the 1850. Um, that, from a manufacturing perspective, um, especially from Mosaic now, um, making us eligible to factory build aircraft on assembly line, uh, that is going to streamline uh, our process from sales to delivery and possibly even pre-built aircraft uh, to sell at shows like this. With your engine coming online at this point in time, being non avgas leaded related, and the JP4 type fuels, um, and you having a off-country aircraft that sometimes will go to countries where traditional avgas that's available here in the States isn't. It's like the stars lined up with the both of you to make this work. So how did the relationship start in it was sort of like a natural? When did it, when did it begin? Uh, well, I think that was, that was probably two Oshkoshes ago, uh, one of our uh, head techs drug me over here to meet with uh, one of the Delta Hawk reps and um, you know the verdict kind of was well this this is really cool but it does not fit our application um, this is not for, for us the the 180 that was announced at the time is not going to um, 
you know, perform in, in an aircraft with a gross weight of in excess of 3,500 pounds. Um, and then there was some backroom discussions about, well, you know, we'll, we'll build the airplane, you know, if you build the six, we'll order them. Well, if you order them, we'll build the six. And so then it was up to us to find a customer that would do a minimum amount of orders for um, what we're going to call the DH-1850. Um, and so we then set out to find um, a customer and received um, um, actually several times over how many engines were needed for the original minimum um, required for them to, to start that program. All the good news this year for you has not stopped. On top of that, you now have a entry into the hybrid arena that's being developed. Can you expound upon that a bit? Well, um, we've had some other press releases that have shown that we have won some hybrid electric contracts with NASA and AFWorks and the government for uh, for some of those applications. And there is a lot of range extension need uh, within both the military, some seg market segments like the eVTOL segment where batteries just aren't living up to the hype, if you want to call it that, that need the ability to, to get to the range and, and applications. So uh, Delta Hawk engine actually pairs very well in a hybrid power plant solution. And uh, that is another um, essentially business path and opportunity that we're pursuing. And, and on top of that, you get to use existing infrastructure that already has the uh, JP fuels right there. That's correct. And especially in the military, one fuels mandate that we already run on JP-8 as well as on Jet A-1. Um, we're, we're perfectly positioned in being a U.S. manufactured, U.S. owned, U.S. Uh, IP. Uh, also gives us a lot of, uh, uh, call it extra points with uh, military applications. Excellent. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.